Hello guys, I'm Caio and today we are here again in collaboration with our partner and colleague David from Locksmith Kiles. Hello David, how are you doing? Hello Caio, how are you? I'm great man, everything's fine. Perfect. We are here today in the second live stream to talk about the XP400 from the manufacturer Autel. The last week we talked about the IM608 Pro and all the functions that we have in the device. And today we are here to talk about the accessories we have with the XP400, with the, I'm sorry, with the 608 and the 508, that is the XP400 Pro. We will talk about the functions, what we can do, what we cannot do, what is this device and why we need to have it. Right, Davi? Yeah, correct. Um, yeah, just to point out that that device can be used mainly with in three modalities. Combined with the 608, which is the more most powerful combination, combined with the 508 and um, as a standalone product as well. That's it. We will show to you guys today how we work with the 508 and the same way we are working with the 508, we can work on the 608. And then at the end, we will show how to work on the computer uh, in the standalone mode with the software on the, on the PC. All right. How to download it and how to use it. So as we talk about the XP400 will be used to pre-code the keys when we need to do a key programming, right? Talking about the key programming right now. The same function will be used on the 508 and on the end on the 608. We can read keys, we can write keys, and we can reuse the keys. For example, if we program a key for a BMW 2015, for example, we can reset the key and use again in another car. It's one function that we can use with the XP400 Pro. For another example, when we need to go to program a key for a Volkswagen Golf, right? We need to write a, some information on the key and then we need to put on the XP400 as well. Without the XP400, we cannot do key programming on, on brands like Volkswagen, Audi, uh, BMWs and, uh, and Mercedes-Benz is the mo most important, all right? Let me show you guys how to work, how it's, how it's work, all right? The XP400 on the device. Let me just share the screen, Davi, if you want to talk something. Meanwhile, I, I just open my team viewer. Yeah, no, in and this case, uh, today we're going to show you how to work with the 508, which is um, a combination that is not very common for people to know about. People only assume that the XP400 Pro can be used with the 608 because you already have it included when you buy the machine. But in this case, this is a combination that you can also have. You just need to acquire the 608, then the XP400 Pro, and they are, they are a complete and perfect match. Also, when you combine it with the other accessories, the GVOX tools and the APB112. Sure, and I can show it to you guys before connect to the device. I will show you what came inside of the XP400, what we can use with the XP400. If we buy separately from the, the, the device, uh, as we need to buy from the 508, the same kit came inside of the 608 as well, all right? So let me just show to you guys. I'm just checking here. Let me come back to the screen. Here I am. So here we are. So here we have our main device. This is the XP400 Pro, all right? This version we, uh, is the version we need to use with the XP4, uh, with the 508. Why? Because we, we buy it separately like this. It came in, a, in, a, in this suitcase, all right? In this case. And inside we have this. Let me open here. What we have inside, right? Let me just put it here. Here we have, so the XP400 came here. We have a lot of cables and PCBs and everything that we need to read. For example, an EEPROM and an MCU and all the cables. When we need to take out the EEPROM from the PCB, from the main board, or when we need to do a, a, a reading in circuit, when we need to solder the cables on the PCB, right? 
For example, we have the cable, the APA109. All right, as you guys can see here, this cable, Autel will tell us when, when we need to use it. But I'm talking about EPRON, MCUs, cables, when to use, when not to use. Um, why do I need to, to have this? Why I need to use the XP400? For example, if we need to read some, some immobilizers from Mercedes and the device is not working or the car is not working by OBD, we need to take out a piece from the car. It calls the AES. We take out and we read on bench. We read on, on the bench, on the working bench. Then we need some cables to do it. So the cable out there will, will tell us to use will be the APA 109, for example. I will show you guys some examples what I'm talking about, but that's why we need to use the XP400 and uh, when we need to use the XP400, right? For example, to do a, 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 an all key loss situation for a Mercedes or, or when the OBD from the car is not is just not working. And then we need to, to give some solution for our, our customer. And that's the solution, taking out and reading on bench, all right? And it came with a lot of cables that we need to use in some different, in some different uh, uh, jobs, all right? It came as well with the, the cable to do the, the Mercedes programming. When we have communication by OBD, we have this cable, all right, that we need to, to insert on the AIS from Mercedes. We have a lot of more cables here. For example, one of the biggest uh, fears from the locksmiths and from the guys who work with the EPROMs on PCB is to take out the, the EPROM from the, the PCB. Why? Because we need to, to, to give a lot of hot air to the PCB and it can broke the PCB, basically. What we have in Autel, Autel develops a, a clamp that we connect on the XP400, and then we can use the little clamp to just put a, a, um, bit, um, on the top of the EEPROM and read the information directly just with this clamp. We don't need to take out from the PCB, all right? So more cables, Just let me just put it here and here. What more we have with the XP400? We have a lot of a lot more, more stuff. For example, some PCBs that we need to use to read some old models from models, different models, immobilizers, comfort models, ECUs, engine control units. So everything uh, more old. We have a lot of PCBs here that auto will tell us when to use it and when not to use, of course, because or we need to use the PCBs or we need to, to use the cables or we need to take out the EPROM from the PCB and read with some adapter that auto will give us what is the device, that, that what is the, the, the adapter that we need to use. That's what came inside of the XP400 as well as in this kit and in the XP in the 608 Pro as well. It's the same kit, came everything the same, just here and the and in the 608 Pro. David, do you remember something else that I'm missing? No, oh, from the unboxing, yeah, it's just, um, just to point out the, like the XP400 Pro, you can use it, the EEPROM functions, not only, it doesn't have to be always soldering, modules so you can use other functions that doesn't include that risk of destroying a board or sometimes locksmiths they don't want to go through that process and they are afraid of that so they lose those jobs they lose the opportunity to do that those kind of jobs that usually are one of the most profitable when you're going to do a bmw or mercedes well in this case bmw um, that's a big opportunity, a big ticket, and people just miss that just out of fear because they don't know how to use it properly. And I mean, sometimes if you have to sold and you want to avoid that, that's okay. But there are other sorry, sorry, let, me, let me just put you on screen. Oh, don't worry. That's you. There okay. are other type of jobs 
in which you don't need to sew anything. You just need to unscrew and put it back together again. That's it. You just need to remember some basic steps to disassemble a module and to put it back together, but you don't need to mess it around with soldering or heat or anything. Uh, you just need to follow simple steps. And That's it. And I, and I will show some simple steps here right now on the on the device, on the 508. That will be the same as the in the 608. So let me show you guys. Let me just share my screen. Let's share my here, my screen. Let's just open it. Can you guys see, right? Nope. Yeah. And now? Can you see my screen, David? Yes. Yeah, I can see it. Okay. So when we go, let me just making sure that everyone is seeing my screen. But everyone is seeing just the team viewer or the 508 screen? I'm seeing the team viewer. And right now? Yeah, it's still team viewer. Now I can see the Okay. Whiteboard. Great. So let me just put it on full screen. Okay. So when we are here on our software, the XP 400, we will always use on the programmer function. So let me just put here more bigger because I think it's here. Yeah. So when we need to use the XP 400 and when we need to sew the, or, uh, or read some EEPROM or some MCU or some module, we need to go always on the programmer function, the blue button on the on the top of the, the screen. We just press on the programmer, we accept. The device will check if the XP 400 is updated and it's updating right now. Every time we auto give us some new software to download, it will update automatically the IM, the XP 400 Pro. It's very, very, very important to maintain your device updated because auto is always giving a um, repairing something or creating new softwares to do our our job. So 90%, it's almost done. And I have here some keys as well to read, to show to you guys that the device can read keys, can, can reprogram keys, can read models and everything. So here we are. Here we go to the chip apron M MCU when we need to read the, uh, the modules or we need to read some MCU or EEPROM. So just press it, go cheap read and write. Here, so if you guys don't know what to do and you have the model on your hands and you, you need the, the diagram and how to, to read it, you go directly for immobilizer when it's about the immobilizer from the car. So let's go for immobilizer. Then, for example, go. Let's go for Chrysler, and let's read some 300C. Okay. Here we have both parts from the MCU that we need to read: the EEPROM or the flash. Uh, actually, when we need to do some pro some immobilizer functions, we need to to read the EEPROM. All right, so when we need to read the EEPROM, we have schematic diagram. It will shows us how, show us how to read it. Out there, we'll go online, we'll download the file. That's very important. The device don't work without internet. The device will work, but 90% of the function will not be used. So please, always keep your device connected to the internet. It's very important. Okay, here for example, we have all the we have a picture from the model. 
it, in this case, it's the ignition coil. It's the same. Um, it's the same model. As you guys can see here on on the left, you have the coil, and here you have the PCB. As you guys can see, you have the cables that you need to use. You have the colors where you need to solder the cable. It's for this for this unit. You need to solder four cables in order to read the EEPROM that contains the information from the immobilizer that you need to use to, to generate a new key, a new transponder, all right? And on your right side of the screen, you have an operation guide that will give you the steps you need to do to in order to, to read it properly. It will uh, tell you what the cable you need to use, all right? What is the, uh, the adapter you need to use? Is the XP400 Pro X as well? <clears throat> so that's it, for example. Let's go for another car. Davi, give me some car to to show to the, to them. A journey, for example. A Dodge, yeah, or some BMW. As well. Okay, let's go for BMW, for example. Let's go for for BMW. BMW, we have like the CAS three plus. In CAS three plus, it will show us us the same what we need to do to read inside of the MCU, the EEPROM or the flash. A EEPROM, for example, schematic diagram. As you guys can see, the, the screen is almost the, almost the same, always. When you need to, to have the schematic diagram, just press schematic diagram, and Alta will give you how you need to solder the cables. So let's just wait. And the same screen on your right side, you have the operation guide, the step-by-step -step you need to do, the cable you, you need to use. And on your left side, you have a picture from the, the module. That's the CAS from BMW. And if you just... And you have here a very good high-resolution uh, picture that shows you where to solder which color of the cable you need to, to use, all right? Auto will give you all the instruction, instructions on how to do the procedure. You don't need to know where to solder the cable. You just need to open the picture and do what, the, what, the, what Auto is telling you to do, basically. It's pretty easy. And of course, please, every time Auto give you some information, as we have here on our right side in operation guide, please read it to know ex exactly what you need to do, the cable you need to do, and follow all the steps. All right. With this information, I think it's it's, it's a great information to give it to you guys. In this case, in this Castry Plus with a mask 0, 0 m 23 s we can clone th this unit using this function with the 508 and the XP400. Uh, or the 608, we can read the EEPROM, um, save it, we can read the flash, save it, just buy some new unit or use it a unit and write the EEPROM and the flash and that's it. You have cloned the unit. It's one example, pretty simple, but we can do it with our XP400 Pro and the IM508. And that's just two ex ex examples. We can go for Chevrolet, for example, and it will give us some models as well. We can read the, the cruise immobilizer model, and it's the same way. We go for EEPROM. It will show us the schematic diagram. We just press it. It will go online, download the file that we need to use in order to be to, to solder the, uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the PCB. All right? And it's always the same, the same screen. The interface will be the same. And just a reminder, this function of the of advanced immobilizer, of course, is for the, the users who are already, um, how can I tell you this, um, have some, a little more experience than a, a normal locksmith, right, David? Yeah, correct. This is that, a... that requires a little more uh, knowledge in the field, but 
even if if you are a, a new locksmith, you will need some practice. So you can you can buy some modules from a young yard and start practicing before doing this on a customer's car. But you need, of course, you, in this case, it's not as easy as to program something on the OBD just sitting in the in the in the car. So in this case, you will need some practical hand uh, manual abilities as well with, uh, with the other tools, with soldering, your ability with the detail, and you have to be a pulse, patience. So, but that can be acquired, those abilities, but you need time and you can do it. Uh, David, when I started in this business, in this profession, the guy who, who st let me just put us on the screen a little. The guy who showed me this this word, this profession, the locksmith profession, he showed, he tells me, Caio, I will give you this box. It was a box like this, with a, a lot of modules with PCBs from junkyard, and I was from like two or three months just soldering, soldering every day, eight hours per day, for like two months, and that's the way you 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 know how to do it. It's, yeah, right. it's your feeling. You you need to practice a lot. In that way, you will have trust in in yourself. So that way, when you are facing a customer card, you you don't have fear. You will not doubt yourself, and you know exactly what do you need to do. So that, that's Perfect. Correct. Just practice over and over again, and you will get it. That's it. Mm -hmm. And here we have another example. Again, one PCB with uh, all the cables that we need to use to solder on the on the PCB in order to be able to read the EEPROM and the flash. All right. So let's go back. This was a very, very advanced function that we need to use in order to be able to read the immobilizer when the procedure by OBD is not working. All right. It's not always like this. It's important to tell to you guys that never see this this profession from locksmith it's not always like this is just when the things don't work by obd then you have to to use the advanced functions like the xp 400 pro in order to read the information from the immobilizer okay let's go back oh here 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 so let's go back so we just take a look on the cheap eprom mcu ECU functions. So let's take a look on the key function. What is this? So in this function, we can read keys. For example, let me put my screen here and here. So we can read different types of keys. As, as you guys can see, we have a BMW key, the old model. All right. We have a flip key that's a this key is used a lot on our market as well as BMW. And we can read the Mercedes keys as well with our XP400. And one difference that we need to talk is, is this. When we talk about Mercedes keys, the IM508 cannot read Mercedes keys. Why? Because on the... On the package from the 508, it came with the XP... 200 and the xp 200 is just to read keys for all the keys but not the mercedes keys so in order to do mercedes keys you guys who already have the 508 will need to buy the xp 400 pro in order to do the mercedes keys let me just show you guys what is the xp 200 just a second Here, guys. So here we have the XP200 from the 508, the IM508. So as you guys can see, the difference is 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 big, right? Here we have the the hole to put the Mercedes keys, and on the XP4 on the XP200 we don't have the the reader from Mercedes keys. We don't have where to put the Mercedes keys because it works by infrared. And this one don't have the, the infrared reader. All right. That's why you cannot do Mercedes keys with the IM508 without the XP400. You need the XP400 to do the Mercedes keys. All right. So let's go and read some information. 
to show to you guys some key information. Let me just put my screen back here. So let's start reading a BMW key. We just need to put on our, let me put here again my screen. We just need to put our key inside of the XP400, all right? And then go to our software and go for key read and write. Just, for, just go for automatic detection. As you guys can see here, we have a lot of different types of transponders, but you don't need to know all of them. You have the automatic detection and, we, and it will recon recognize the key you have inside of the XP400 and will tell you what is the transponder that you have. So just press automatic detection and let's wait for the information. And here we have all the information. Here we have a chip type PCF7945A. All right, with this information, we know the key is working. The key should be working on the car because we can read it, all right? We have the key ID. The key ID is like the, um, the personal information from the key. With this ID, is, is, we can check if this key is from the car, we will go to do the key programming, for example. But a very common uh, use for this function is to know if the key is working or not because we have a lot of times that we receive a car we have a car that we don't know if the key is working or not if we can read the key or we cannot read the key with this function we just put the key inside of a dex p400 we, we try to read it in, and if we have some information being read it's okay the the key should be okay okay david you want to add something no, that, that function is very, it's very helpful in that case. Also to know sometimes you have a key that you think that it works for that car and you put it in there and I don't know, for example, with the Foley keys, which the Ram keys and the Dodge keys are very alike, sometimes the Jeep keys as well. So you can detect the type of chip and you know if you have the right key for that car or not, or you can compare the owner the information that the owner of the car has with the key that you're going to program. If they are different, maybe that's, that means that you are on the wrong direction. Because sometimes somebody calls you, they just want a copy of their key. You buy the key, you arrive to the location, and the owner has an already working key. You read the, the key that is already working with the car, that is starting the car, locking, unlocking, and then you read your key. If they are different, then uh, something is wrong there. So that's the that's the first step that you need to do before doing anything with, without before touching a car. So that's the function that the XP phone the Pro provides. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So let's try to read more two keys. Let's try to read the Mercedes keys. Just put again on the XP four hundred. In this case, we need to choose the type of the key we are trying to read. On Mercedes, the auto detection function don't work because it have infrared, okay? In this case, we just go to, to the last function and we can see there IR, IR, infrared from Mercedes. Just press it and just press read key information. it will read the information that contains inside of the Mercedes keys. As well, we have the key ID and we know this key should be working on the car, all right? Here we have all the information from the Mercedes key. So let's try to read the last key. It's a key from uh, an Audi. It's a TT version of the Audi. Just key. Let's just put our key inside of the XP400 and automatic detection. Let's see what information we have. And if the key don't read, we have some problem with the key. But as you guys can see, it's a Megamos 48. We have information. We have the key ID and it's locked. 
It means it should be working on some car. We don't know which car, of course, but it should be working in, in some car. Okay? So that's a function that is very, very used. We have another function that I, I, I personally like a lot and it's very important, that is the remote detection. How many times a, a, a car goes to your workshop and the customer say to you, hey, my remote is not working, what is going on? And you check your you check the battery, you change it, and it's and you press the button and you don't know if the remote is working or not, right? So here with the XP 400 and the 508 or 608, you can check if the remote is working, the remote part is working. How? Just press on remote detection and go for frequency detection. When you press it, you just put the key on, on your XP 400 and press any button. As you guys can see, when you press the button, you have this number on, on the screen. You have the 350 in, uh, and 15 megahertz. It means when you press the button, the remote is doing something. The remote is, is, is giving you the, the frequency and should be working on the car. And if you press the button, you have the frequency and the car doesn't work, maybe the problem is in the car. Maybe the remote is not paired with the car. So you can do a diagnostic on the remote in five seconds, just check if the frequency is working or not. All right. Let's go, just go back, go back. Oh, and the last function that I want to talk about in the XP 400, the EPROM, the, 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 the I'm sorry, the soldering part, okay, the advanced part is right key via damp. What is this one? This one is when you need to read the immobilizer, just as we say we we saw it here, reading from from the Chrysler as we saw it, as we saw it. We read the information, we back it up on the device, then we go in the right key via dump and we load that file, and it can generate a new key. This function is for this. We just press it. Let me show to you guys. So we use the other function to read and this function to load what we read and generate the new key. I think I, I explained myself right, Avi? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, it's very, very easy to understand, to be honest. So, for example, we, we saw it right now, a cast tree. Just, just go for cast tree here. Just press the, the, the MCU that we have there. And we just need to, to go on load data. Just, just go on the file that, you, that we, you just read right now and load it here. And then new key on the XP400 and press select the key that we need to, you, to, that you want to write. For example, the key number three. Just select it and go for make key. It will write the information that is in the key, key tree position on the new key. And that's it. You have your, your spare key done. That's the function that is the write key via dump, by dump. So that is, so this functions that we saw it here was the function that we need to use inside of the programmer function on our top. The right key by dump, as we have on our right side of the screen, is what we saw here when we already have the, the, the mobilizer read it. So we just read it and load on the right key by dump function. So what more we can talk about? Oh, when you, uh, the XP400 will be used when we need to do a fiat key, all right? We need to pre-code the key. We need to use the XP400. All right. Let me do your owl. Oh, and the last part that I want to show to you guys is the XP400 being used on the computer. So, David, if you have anything to talk about, meanwhile, let me. Yeah, just um, I was going to remind you that that you the we can also use the XP400 Pro as a standalone uh, device which is, for example, an improvement that you have when you buy the IM608 
you're kind of buying two devices in one. So you have the the main unit, the 608, hold on, and you also have the XP400 Pro, which you have to combine it with the tablet, but you can also use it alone if you have a, a Windows uh, laptop. So you can use it as well. You have to download the software, put it in there, and just start working, start making keys, and start making progress. So you can have somebody uh, working with a 608 in a car, and then you or a different person also working at the same time with the XP400 Pro and a laptop. So you can combine them fu that function. Because as we talk about in the last in the last live stream that we do about the 608 Pro, uh, the device is not just only for key programming, it's for diagnostic as well. So you guys who have a workshop that want to, to have this device, I can show you and I show to you guys one function that you will have is to recognize the, re the, the frequency from the key, to recognize if the key is working or not working. So you have a lot of stuff that you can do with your diagnostic device. It's not just for diagnosis, it's for the locksmith part of the job as well. Let me just screen here, just share this part of the screen. Just a moment. Right. And also, if you can um, make a general explanation about how is this, how this works, um, using the XP Founder Pro alone, you have to download a software. Is it free? If you have to pay something? Um, sure, sure. Let me talk about a little about this. The XP 400 to be used as a standalone device on your computer is completely free. You just need to go, and uh, when you buy our device from Locksmith Keyless, from us, from you just go for the technical support, and we will tell you how to do it. We just go for the outer web page. There we then we have the the download part. Inside of the download part, you have the main programmer for the XP 400. You have the software that you need to download and install on your computer. It's completely free. You don't need, you don't need to pay anything else to use this function. Okay. So in this case, um, yearly subscription or tokens? No, no early, early, um, yearly su subscriptions, no tokens. You don't need to pay anything. Just need to have your year updated on your device, okay? And that's it. And start using your XP400 Pro and your device as well. No tokens. So it's open, okay. Just a second, please. And let me just share this screen. Okay. Can you see my screen, right? Yeah. Okay. It's just updating, updating. Let's just wait. Okay, so let me just, and that's the main software when we go to, to use the software on our computer, our Windows computer, operational system. So how to use it? So in here on our, our left side of the screen, we just press it and we need to choose what we need to do. We want to read an apron, an MCU, an engine, or immobilizer, instrument panel cluster, remote, airbag, or older functions that Auto have developed. So in this case, when we want to have the picture with the, the schematic diagram in Immobilizer, we just choose Immobilizer as well as we have choose in the device. Here is the same. We just press in Audi and we have a, here a lot of, we have all the brands that Auto can read on Bench. Let's go as well as we see on the device. Let's go for BMW. Let's go for a case, a case three again. And we just press OK. It will load the program. It's already load, loaded. And here we have the diagram. We just press it. And here we have it. As you guys can see, we have the same picture that we have in our device. We will have on our computer, on our software. By color, where we need to solder is pretty easy. Just follow the instructions and read it. So let's 
So we just press OK. When we do the, 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 the soldering of the cables, we just go for read up here. It will read all the information that will appear here. Once we have all the information here, we just press save, create a new folder, and save there the, the file from the EEPROM. Then if we need to use in our device, we just need to, to have a, 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 a sticker, a little pen drive, just put on our computer, put it there, and then put it here and load the file. It's pretty easy. It's pretty simple to use. Let's show more functions as well as we have here, like I, I showed to you guys before. For Mercedes-Benz, for example, when we have some older units, we just press here, just to, OK, go for diagram. And here we have the picture of the immobilizer on Mercedes. What we need to do, which cables we need to solder, where we need to solder, Auto will give us all the information. We don't need to know, to, to know by ourselves where to solder the cables. Auto will tell us where to solder. Okay, that's the function that we need to use on bench. We have a lot more more functions, but today I think it's it was a, a we, we could talk about I think all the functions that we can use in XP four hundred in general way, right? We don't have time to talk about each one of them, but the main functions we, I think David we talk about. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, the. They use it with the, the XP 400 Pro with a 608, with a 508, and along with a laptop. Also, the EEPROM function, uh, soldering and without soldering. Also, read keys, write keys, and detect the frequency. Those are like the most powerful and general functions of the XP 400 Pro. We cover all that. And also, um, these devices, when you compare this to other devices other programmers the the quality the performance and the price they are all very convenient to be honest so if you check that as well on our website on locksmithkillers.com or on other websites you can compare different manufacturers different brand you will see that uh, in this case this brand offers a very good uh, round set of qualities price quality and performance that's it we have until auto we got we have a we got a lot of devices different devices different prices and pretty much high prices all right we, to do the same functions as as david said like six years ago to do uh, the same functions we need to spend like ten thousand k for example a lot of money in order to do a key programming. I read some ACU, and now with auto devices, we have good quality. You have a, a, a high standard device just for a, a fair price. So I think it's it's a very very good. Let's uh, David. What do you think? L let's answer some questions from the chat. We have here a bunch of questions. Let's let's read them. You you want to 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 talk something else, David? No, no, that's that's okay. Well, we yeah, let's let's see if somebody has any any questions and call it a day. Perfect. We have here again our friend Salman. Hey, Salman, how are you doing? Welcome back, uh, Salman. We talk about the J twenty five thirty four in the last uh, live stream that we do. You can check in the Locksmith Killers uh, Facebook page. And YouTube page and in in our page as well in the Yata channel you can you can check the the old video that we talk about the J twenty five thirty four the pass through device. So what more? What more? Oh, that's a very good question for those guys who already have the who already are locksmith. So guys, the G series, the G chassis from BMW is not working there is no device in the market that can do g series keys from bmw we just can do the f series is the last system that we can do key programming all right let's see more questions
here is a question that is is a very tricky question, right? Um, Nissan cars, where we have where we need to pay some annotation. Auto will tell us when we have any risk on the procedure. When we go to read any pin code or we go to read a mobilizer, Auto will will tell us, hey, this procedure can be can damage the unit. Are you sure you want to use it by OBD? Yeah, I, if you press yes, you are taking the risk because Auto is telling you you have a risk to doing by OBD. In this case, we always uh, tell to the customer to take out the unit and read on bench with our XP400 Pro as we just saw, we, we just uh, show to you guys right now. Okay, what more we have here? Saludos para Colombia, que tal? Oh, here, another good question. Hey, Diego. And we don't have, this is a very common question about the EWS-1 on BMW. This system, yes, we can do it, but all the keys without, all, all the keys from EWS, we need to take out the EWS from the car. We cannot do EWS system from BMW by OBD with, with any device. No device can do it. We always need to take out the model from the car. What more? Oh, sorry, no, this one. Here we have a question in Spanish. I will just relate it. What is the difference between the 508 and, and 608? The difference basically is in the software that we have in 608 and 508. The 508 have a basic, basic diagnostic software and the 608 have a, an advanced uh, immobilizer function. In the immobilizer part of the device, of the software, both devices are the same, all right? And of course, the 508 don't have the J2534, the pass-through VCI, okay? The 508 don't have it, and the 608 have it. And I think it's all the, the questions. Hey, guys, if you have any questions, please just put here above on, on our comment section. And I think that's it. That's it. Oh, here I think I have another question. Oh, it's a very good question in, in Spanish as well. They are asking, hey, what the IM608 can what can we do with the IM608 if we don't pay our uh, subscription, our annual subscription? It's a good question. And the device will lose like 85% of the functions. It's very, very important to maintain the subscription of the of our device. All right. Uh, as well for the diagnostic and the key programming, we need to maintain our subscription uh, paid, all right? It's an annual subscription. And all the prices and and how to do it, we can. you guys can talk with Locksmith Keyless and they can uh, help you guys in order to, to solve all these problems, all right? And uh, I think that's it, Davi. Oh, I think I, we have another comment. Uh, Renu Kangu, I'm, I mean, our friend just asked some special, it's not a special question, but hey, uh, T Mecca, we need to know exactly which model that we are talking about, all right? Just put, I will just message you on the YouTube channel. I think you'd send a message on YouTube, yep. And you give me some extra information and I can help you, all right? So, guys, that's it. David, thank you by for stand for being here with no with us again. Also another to, live streaming. Yeah, to to just to to finish the when you pay the subscription for Outhill, you are also extending the warranty on the machine, so you have an added value there. I mean, mostly all the scanners, all the manufacturers, they have some kind of subscription because that helps maintain a whole group of technicians who are working in providing you that kind of capability that you have because that these are aftermarket devices these are not the if you are going to buy the money the manufacturer the um, software and programming you will need 
maybe 200,000 or more dollars. So basically it doesn't make any sense. So in order this, for these um, aftermarket devices to have a competitive price, the, um, they will have a huge engineering team behind them. That's why um, each month they're releasing updates, they have improvement, they couldn't program this car in two weeks, now they can do it. So all that is, is not changing by magic. There is a whole team behind so that's why it's the, the whole point of the subscription. That's what supports, it's not the unit, it's the, the subscription what supports the whole system. And also that's why they encourage you to do that, extending the warranty. So you have a, the first year that you buy the Autel, you use it and you extend the warranty a second year, you will, you will not have, you're not just paying software and that's it. You're also improving your warranty. So if your unit has an issue, if you start communicating, if a cable, something happened with a cable, you just call Autel or call your supplier, us, or whoever you, you bought that, which is an authorized dealer, and they will process that for you and you will receive a new a replacement. But that's an advantage that you have with that device that you don't have with other devices. That in, in other devices, the warranty is one year and after that, you're on your own. With this device, you, you have the subscription, but you also have an extended warranty. Perfect, Davi. Perfect. And that's it, guys. Thank you for watching. And the next week, we will be talking about, um, I think, about the G-Box, G-Box 2, all right, or the APB 112. Please stay tuned to our channel in Facebook and YouTube, and you need to know, and you will, you, you will know what we will be talking about in the next week. Thank you, David. Thank you, Locksmith Keyless. I see you guys next week. Bye-bye. Bye, Kyle.